Thank you, Amanda. Um, it's time to disengage your brains now. Um, this is not the stellar part of the, of the, of the, of the afternoon. Uh, we're talking about medical records. Um, but hopefully by the end of my talk, I might have imbued a little bit of enthusiasm uh, for how we um, record our medical information um, and maybe, maybe how we should to link in with what we've heard from other speakers about the importance of information. Um, and we live in the age of information. Um, and in the real world, there are several questions that I, I can put here that I, I bet more than 90% of, of you in the room um, can shop, bank, travel, entertain, search, get their music, look at the stock market. Many of you can do that at will because you have a smartphone in your pocket. But if you look at the medical world, who can, in the room, access their medical data online, schedule medical appointments, prescribe or receive prescriptions online, contact your healthcare worker, or submit medical data? If you wanted to tell your doctor about the fibrillation you just had that you felt, could you do that? And the answer is very few people. We lag in the medical world behind the, the surge of information that we have. And just to, to, to highlight that, um, my colleagues who are in the, in the room have heard me wittering on about this data over the, over the last few days. Um, but if you look at transport, for instance, uh, we, we can book our, our Ryanair flight online and so on, but if you, if you look at an organization like Transport for London, um, up here you've got hundreds of millions of, of bus rides and tube rides per month, hundreds of millions. Transport for London have open access to their data to the wide world. So now we have uh, the ability to access it for analytics and the result is that you can have an app that will tell you 20 different ways to get from Chelsea to Kensington and the price and they'll tell you how far to walk to get to the bus which is arriving in 90 seconds. This is all real time for 100 million journeys every month. It's astounding what we can do. And you pay for it just by showing your card to a machine. Um, so so it's, it is astounding. And why we don't have access to this in the medical world, admittedly th there are constraints, most importantly security, but why we don't have access to this is a mystery. So, electronic medical records generally refer to a record that exists within one organization about a patient. In contrast to an ele electronic health record, which seems to be um, a record across institutions and across disciplines about one patient. And the concept of a personal health record where the patient keeps the details and potentially could electronically um, inform people about what's going on with them uh, using uh, an electronic system. So defined then as a longitudinal electronic record of patient health information generated by one or more encounters in a care delivery setting, including but not exclusively demographics, progress notes, problems, medications, vital signs, past medical history, immunizations, laboratory and radiology data. It's easy, I think, but one has to th look carefully at what you're saying to list the advantages of having an electronic health record. We have accurate, current, and complete information at the point of care, allowing rapid access to this information when we need it fast, um, and we can securely share it among the relevant people. And in, in this forum, the, the sharing of data between medical and radiation oncology, between palliative care and medical oncology, and so on. We can track the information. If we've recorded it digitally, it can be tracked and reported uh, very much eas more easily than if it's on paper. It empowers procedural functions such as scheduling and activity. Uh, the practice efficiency improves. The administrative and business efficiency improves. And in fact, most of the effort has come from the drive to understand the business side before the clinical side. And therein lies the point of the talk. Overall, it's been shown to uh, improve overall quality of care. 
there are challenges in producing an, an electronic health record. Um, it's expensive, both the investment in the, in the, in the equipment and the acquisition, uh, the maintenance and updates. The implementation requires a huge change in mindset through a range of staff categories. It's not just about the administrators who are recording our, our dictations or our, our records. It's across the board. Every functional member of the department needs to understand what an electronic medical record can do for them. And highlighted in the different color here is the important thing. This whole thing is process orientated. And at the end of it, you, can, you need to be looking at providing data validation and security. And of course, that's paramount to what we do uh, as healthcare workers. So the next bit of the talk is a description of how we've moved to uh, uh, an electronic med medical record. We aren't completely paperless yet, but we will get there um, as, we, as we move through it. Um, so I'm going to use some screenshots from the system we use, and it's not an advert for the system. Um, those of us in the radiation oncology world in the room will be very familiar with what, what this is and, and will be familiar with what I'm saying. So what I'm really trying to do here is to use these few slides to show you what can come out of a record uh, uh, rather than just storing what used to be paper in a computer. So process orientation. EMR could just be literal. It could be the use of a computerized platform to store s some the same documents that you would um, normally store on paper. Or it could achieve that and at the same time add enormous value to the process of patient care through many different functionalities, limited only by the imagination and ingenuity of the users. And I'm pleased and proud to say that in a small department like ours, I think we have 35 people now, everybody has engaged and everybody has given their two cents worth to, to how we can use the EMR. So all activities within a department and in our situation, it's a radiation oncology department, can be distilled to individual process. So I've started off just with the referral process and mentioned a few of them, but every single function that you can do can be distilled to, to, to process. So in referral, you receive the referral, you triage the urgency of this referral as to who's, who needs to see the patient, you look for the documentation, the appointments need to be generated, all of those are, are a series of tasks that need to be done in a particular order to provide a record. The same with consultation, the same with um, ordering and receiving investigations, etc. We started very basically. We had a, a board on the wall and we said, what's involved in, in um, a patient going through? So if you look, you probably can't read it, but you're going from MDT, referral, consult, can't see sideways here, um, scans, planning, treatment, and out to follow up. So it's a simple thing. But the more you talk about it and the more post-its you put on the wall, the more complicated it gets. And through the process, we ended up highlighting issues that we realized were a problem and we hadn't addressed because we were using paper before this. And it then turned into a much more uh, sophisticated decision tree map where each of the choices that you came along along the way, um, is the patient public or private? That has, a, that ha that has a, 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 an impact on, on, on how we handle the record of this patient. So for every single process in the practice, we went through and did a decision tree and a process, and it informed our policy, and then allowed us to structure the way the, the, our EMR works. This is a document that we used paper to write out our, our primary clinical record. And rather than just using it and then scanning it and putting it into, into the database, we used a functionality within, within our EMR um, called encounters. So this is the sickest person in our, in our practice. His name is Top Cat, and he has every disease that, that you can think of. Um, but if you look at this section here, we're under a tab called encounters and there are several encounters involved, and this just grows and grows as you go along. But this encounter specifically, uh, it was called patient history at that time, but it's now called a primary clinician's record, as was the paper piece that I showed you. And it mimics 
each section of the primary clinician's record. It offers a new record, look at the old record, acknowledge that it's done, or if it's not appropriate. Now, each one of those bars means that a record has come down to say, when it was done, was it completed? Did you finish the task, or was the task not relevant? If you go further on, each one of these has a, a screen and a series of questions and things related to it. We get down to things like, have we explained the side effects and the alternatives? This is important for the quality assurance. Have we discussed, and we've documented that we have discussed these issues, and we'd, we'll get audited on that definitely uh, along the way, if not internally, externally. So the screen and the way it's set up to mimic things is allowing us to track what we do and to ensure that we do do it as it's part of our policy. We can go on to, to further areas of this. This is just showing checklists. You can build in custom checklists into your EMR, which mean that you don't miss steps. So in this particular situation, simulation, there are a series of steps here that, that are required, and again, you have to acknowledge them, and they are signed off. They are signed off to the person who's logged in, and the audit trail is there. So this is far more than just writing a piece of paper and putting it in the computer. Keep going. This is a more detailed uh, um, view of the appointment that is generated for that simulation. And again, you can see down the bottom there, is it completed, is it not appropriate, uh, and, and why? Uh, with opportunity to be, to be um, expanding upon any problems that come up in that particular action. This custom questionnaire is mandatory for anybody who, who, um, who has a, a risk of a four, uh, and it's now coded into the system. A patient who is at risk for a fall has a falls risk, and it, it, is, it is now recorded in the system. Now, all of this information that's being put in can now be drawn to produce summary data and letters out to hospice or to, to, the, refer to the referring GP and so on. So the, the concept of saying that I'm just storing my piece of paper is, is obsolete when you look at what can be done here. As far as task management is concerned, that was a picture of our, of our planning office. And we'd walk in and you'd see a bunch of files, and I'm sure all of us um, in, in the room know the story that you've been given a whole lot of tasks to, to, to do. Somebody's had to put them there and write in them and say, this is what we want you to do. Um, will you do it for us? What we see now is a screen that says tasks. And you can see here there are six planning approval tasks, six ready for review tasks. Uh, the contourings are, are there, and it shows you the detail. Each one of these has a checklist behind it so that you, you know that everything involved in that task is being done and it's being recorded. That particular exercise for the tasking of planning, ec of planning um, uh, issues, we looked at. And here you can see, across three time periods, the mean and the range of times that it took to get through the planning process. And you can see that once EMR was in, it was much tighter and much faster. And that's only because we're m tracking the tasks. And the tracking is happening from within the system rather than us having to go back to look at paper and, and tot up what we're doing. At the end of the day, we also have access to the full gamut of the medical information for the patient. So here's medical history. We've got um, infection issues, allergy issues, and medication. And if I highlight those, you can see, sorry, where am I? Something's not, sorry, I'm, there we go. So, what we have here is a list of the medications that this patient has, all the details uh, at our fingertips at the time. But more than that, we can see if they've got any infections, and at the same time, an alert icon arrives so that we, just at a glance, we can see if this patient requires special precautions when we're treating them. Equally, we can look at allergies and the same icon, and another icon, but in the same place, alerts us to that. So again, it's not a question of just having recorded that the patient has an allergy and scanning that document and putting it into, into the database to find. It's actively interacting on a day-to-day -day basis. This is all very basic stuff, but it's much more than, than, than a, a, a paper record scan. This is possibly where, where most benefit comes from. Within the system, very much like the process map that we, that we, we, we used to, to, to populate our, our EMR, 
is the ability to have care paths. This particular one maps the patient's pathway through, through planning. And here, sorry, we'll go backwards. Here what we've got is import to contouring, possibly with fusion, and then through the various steps of planning and peer review and out to the finished plan. Each of those boxes hides um, questionnaires and um, uh, tasks that are required, and they are tasked at a time, and they are signed off at a time that is tracked by the system, which means that we can now derive the time frame. So we can certainly populate the KPIs that, that, that our, our uh, um, quality regulators need, but it also allows us to start tracking where we can get efficiencies and where the holdups are. Similarly, the, 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 the functionality of the system allows the, these color changes that you see tell us when a task is due, how long you've got, if it's overdue, and when the patient needs to start treatment. So all of this is func functionality w well, well, ab well beyond a, a, a plain medical record. Our perspective as a clinician then means that we get good re record keeping, we can determine care path management, and the end game of that care path that I showed you is that for a disease, let's say intermediate risk prostate cancer that, that Frank was talking about, you could, if you have a tight protocol, determine that so that the minute you write that in, in the record on the first day, the care path is, de de is delineated for the whole journey for that patient. That means that you can say to the patient, here's your appointment for your, your simulation in two months' time, here are your appointments for the radiotherapy a month later, here's your first follow-up a month after that, um, and unless some complication arises, you, it's reliable. It will also track delays if, they, if we have to change them um, and, and allow us to monitor what we're doing. We have a, a quality cycle within our department um, where <coughs> we, we, tr we try to, to monitor the quality aspects of what we do. So when a patient comes through an MDT, is consulted by one of our colleagues, a new patient review meeting is had for every patient where within the department involving the physicians as well as all other staff members, staff groups, um, this patient is, di is discussed before treatment starts so that any issues that, that, are, that are required um, can be discussed. It's recorded and signed off so that one physician is peer reviewed in his decision making by another uh, physician, and it's recorded so that we can show it to, to whoever needs to see it, but also we can feel comfortable that, that it's done. We've had a peer review at that level. The next step is to go to planning, and there is a planning review process that is now written, uh, a, a written description of the intent of planning, and again, once the planning has happened, the, the review by a, a second position is recorded in the system, again, within the, the ele electronic record. If there is any deviation from the plan, this is then put onto a, a, a quality improvement platform for discussion, and can we learn from why the, the deviation happened? And further on, if there were any adverse events that are defined within policy, they will be discussed. And all of that would then feed back to how we decide to treat the next patient with a similar profile. And all of it is, is, is um, maintained by, by the EMR, so that we can track this and aggregate it and use the information of our ongoing practice back to where we to, 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 to the start of the next patient. This activity reporting is, is, is important, and this is actually the crux of why the talk was given. We, we do track all activities, and up till now, it's been mainly, mainly time measurements. Uh, Frank was alluding to activity measurements. But Within the system, every time we access the system and we say the patient is well and is stable or in remission or whatever or has progressed, maybe has died, that is tracked and given a time in the system, which means that the capability exists to using the time of referral, the time of treatment, the end of treatment, and the time of these clinical endpoints, we can be developing survival data straight out of the system. It doesn't need us to go back and look at the charts and say, when did he die, when, when, when did he progress, or when is, he is he still alive without disease? We can see it straight out of the system. So we were hearing our colleagues earlier saying, 
we need to go back and, and, and get our survival data. Um, it, we, the capability exists to do that automatically. And the holy grail is what, when I report to my manager that we saw a thousand new patients this year uh, and this many access times and so on, I can also report this is what our time to treatment failure for this group of patients was. This is our toxicity level. If we structure the EMR properly and the capability is there. So th this is the, f uh, the focus that we are g heading along, is to try and structure our database so that we are able to do that. I've said probably all of that now. Um, for each medical condition, therefore, the group of people involved and led by the clinician needs to define the data set up front so that you can record it in a way that it can be got at with a report. And the ancillary historical and timing information will then be make up the information to provide the, the outcome data that we're looking for. How am I doing? Five minutes, okay. Well before we contemplated EMR, we did a, a case study through our breast MDT and we did it because we were, we were having issues with questions that were being asked. We couldn't remember what was said at the last MDT, what information, what we were looking for. Um, uh, we didn't have current data about what our outcomes, what are our local recurrence rates and, and um, uh, toxicity rates. And we also found that we were being asked to see patients without adequate information. So we applied the process, this is before the EMR uh, in, in intervention, but we applied the same process thing. And many of you who are involved in MDTs will see referral, registration, triple assessment, get a histology and come to a, an MDM. Come to a decision and then go for surgery, get a final histology and come to another MDM, then get a final deci treatment decision and go back for referral to medical and radiation oncology. Standard paradigm. But seen in a way like this, this particular slide refers to the process around referral, and there's a slide for each of these boxes along the way. I'm not going to go through the whole lot of them, but it's important to say that you can characterize each point along your process. In this situation, the, the triple assessment has happened, histology is available, and we can then, real time, in the meeting, review the information that's come in because it's electronic, lock it because now we're going to make our triple assessment decision on that basis and what we'll see sorry is a summary up on the screen in front of the mdt that says we've got clinical radiological pathological scores that amount to concordance obviously if it wasn't concordant we'd get a red light a red light here and it summarizes the stage as t2n1 and it comes out with a treatment decision that says that this person is for breast conserving surgery, central lymph node biopsy, probably to be followed by hormones and radiotherapy. So this comes up, it's agreed to by the group and locked. This then instantly gives us an outcome report that goes off to the GP and serves as the referral to the medical oncologist and to the radiation oncologist or whoever else needs to see the patient. All generated from the system rather than waiting for the, for the secretarial services to produce uh, the, the, the information. So this happened 2010, 2011, 2013. Uh, we, we didn't have the resources to take it further. But what we learned from it is that we, in doing this, we consulted with everybody involved in the MDT in the University Hospital Waterford. We established a defined data set of 180 fields, which was designed to take into account all 112 KPIs that are in the breast unit. It's usually about 12 or 13 that are used, but all 112 were, were, would have been answered by this set. The appropriate rep reporting structures could then answer any question involving those 180 fields. And the system, at the same time, was providing a management tool that allowed you to, to uh, register, um, determine the, the, the urgency of the, of the referral, and provide um, feedback to the GPs. The data set is adjustable. You can add things to it and back. And most importantly, the structure of this MDT is transportable to lung and urology and gynae and all of them, the, the structure of how it was set up. So the observations with this was that collaboration was difficult, getting people in the same room at the same time. Getting the information out of disparate IT systems was really difficult. Compliance, the, the ability to get somebody to fill the forms or to 
to, to, to provide the information. The cost of, 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 of doing this was, at the time for the, for the, for the setup was difficult. Uh, the commitment of people was variable and we were doing it in isolation. Um, so it, it was difficult. The MR is not as simply an electronic version of, of written medical record. The MR brings with it the advantages of digital organization and the realization of the full potential of EMR requires collaboration between the users, the clinicians, and the IT gurus. Rational accumulation, analysis, and use of the data thereafter will power the improvements or give us the outcome data that allow us to make decisions. At the time, there was a, a HICWA audit of, of our MDT, and the, the, the rushing around for two months involving something like 10 different staff members to get the information out of the records was epic. And it reminded me that if I came back to the transport analogy, what we were trying to do is say, please would you get from Cork to Dublin in four hours, and this is your transport currently, when we could have had this, which is an electronic vehicle, okay? But in reality, we might get something a little bit more modest than the Porsche. I'm very pleased to know that there is a, a very coherent e-health strategy for the, for the country. Um, this document is 80 pages long, and it's very detailed. And if it happens or when it happens, I, I, it, it's, it, it'll, be a, it'll be a revelation for us all. And if we can get the big, day, big data, we'll start making really good decisions for, for, for our patients. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dale. We have time for just one question. Sure, I think the word is. Uh, so I love being able to go into our passive EMR, which Con Murphy really was instrumental in setting up and pull any letter or cath report or PET report on the patient. I worked in an American hospital where we had three bad EMRs replacing and overlapping each other in the space of two years. And if you look at the causes of physician burnout in the US, one of the biggest causes of physician burnout is EMR. That, you know, people want just to talk to patients they don't want to be clicking boxes on a screen. And I think that perhaps we need to have something like Google Glasses and scribes and people who are clicking the, bottle, the boxes based on what we elicit. Because I think a lot of us are too busy to be putting in the clicking. I, I agree with you, and this is an issue. I have a colleague in the room, um, and the three of us sit there after new patient clinics uh, for a long time. Getting, getting the information put in, because we do put the clinical information in. At the end of the day, the quality of the data that's recorded is vastly superior to what we're used to. And if you, if you use all of the functionality, and this is just a, a, a surface view of it, th at the end of the day, the patient is getting the benefit. You're right. Um, somebody with enthusiasm is going to do it well, and another person who's, no, who's not enthusiastic is, going to, is not going to do it so well, and you won't get the information out the other end. But the point, I think, is to try and, s and incorporate the questions that we really want answered, which are clinical, rather than business, into the EMR so that we can. Y your point is valid, and w we need to find ways. For instance, a lot of the things that Frank showed us, if, if those could be put in, the patient-reported outcomes can be put in by giving the patient a tablet and saying, just do this while you're waiting to see me and it, it turns up in the system. Now, all of that is possible. If we can be managing 140 million tube journeys a day in London uh, and, and having real-time information, that's all possible. W we need to try and make it happen for our world as well as theirs. Okay, thank Thanks you very, very much. much.